vendor property preservation training. We're going to go over quite a few things regarding our system and what we expect and also what our clients expect. The object objective of this training is to familiarize field reps with the conveyance condition process and to answer frequently asked questions. You will find guidelines, tips, and examples that will aid you in completing work orders both in the field and when submitting paperwork for a smooth and timely process. By the end of this training, you should have a better understanding of quality preservation's policies and procedures and putting a property into conveyance condition. So what is conveyance condition? Conveyance condition is a property that is secured, broom set, winterized, when in season, yard is maintained and completed, undamaged by the big six in mortgage or neglect, and no violations exist to the property. Also, the term conveyance condition refers to FHA head loans only. What is mortgage neglect? It's a term you'll hear often. Um, the HUD guidelines state that the mortgage neglect is failure to pre preserve and protect. This means that if HUD finds any failures in any part of the inspection or preservation process, the lender will be held responsible for that failure. The client may turn and hold all vendors responsible if we do not complete something timely or incorrectly. It's, it is in your best interest to tell the complete story of a property each time you go. For example, um, of mortgage or neglect, failing to report mold on the first visit of the property leads to fixing at your own cost. If the mold grows, you'll be held responsible for that damage as well and any required costs to remediate it. This is the conveyance condition timeline and workflow. So our clients only have 25 days um, of the short 30 day conveyance window. It's extremely important that all that you all complete this process within the allowable time frame. Um, let's see, the client has 30 days and then 29 to 24 days to convey, complete all work and submit all bids. From days 23 to 14, are days to complete client submits over allowable bids to investors. Um, bid approval work orders issued. 13 to 16 days to convey. Um, this is the deadline for you, for the contractors. Complete the bid approvals, place the property in conveyance condition. Five to zero days, order in client's hand for review and submission to HUD. Timing is critical when you're doing conveyance condition because it, everything past the 30-day window results in fees to the servicer. So when you get a work order from us, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to download it or print it off and read it. Your work order is going to have um, the work order number, the client code, point of service, um, a sign date, due date, if it's a priority, like a rush order. Property information. Um, it'll have instructions, which keys to lock, um, keys, lock codes, general instructions, winterization instructions, photos. The condition report can vary by work order or work type. Client requires various ways to, so do not proceed with until you have read the entire instructions. All clients could issue the same work order type, but different instructions. And the best way to handle a rejection and not get sent back to field is to complete the work as outlined as the work order states. Never assume instructions are all the same for each client. Review the last four of the loan number. Some clients require lock boxes or doors to be key to that loan number. If you get to a property and you have no access, an example of no access is a common, um, if the property has a, con a shared or common entry, 
what you're going to do is you're going to attempt to gain access through the shared insurance if unavailable to gain explain why the access couldn't be gained and provide support, supporting photos if you're able to gain entry then um, try to locate the HOA and contact information near the entrance. If the HOA information is not posted, attempt to locate it online. You must document all attempts to access entry to the property with photos and place notes in PPW or on the condition report. Also, another example is a gated community. Um, attempt to make direct contact with the gate attendant. If you're unable to make direct contact, try to locate um, contact information near the entrance information. If the information is not posted, attempt to locate it online. All attempts tried needs to be photo documented. Um, if the property is located in, in an area that you don't have access to, you're going to want to take photos showing it. Um, driveway to the property is gated, private property, beware of dog signs posted. Um, you're going to let us know what is going on with the property, why you can't access it. Driveway to the property is gated and locked, no access. Um, work can not do due to flood. You're going to show pictures. Occupancy determination. This section outlines requirements for determining occupancy. Before proceeding with any securing order, you're always going to want to determine occupancy of the subject property. If the property is occupied, do not complete any work and provide photos to support if it's occupied or not. Vacant properties, a couple ways you can tell is broken windows, utilities have been turned off, lawn is overgrown. Doors are unlocked. Um, neighbors advise that the occupants have moved. Occupied, you'll see garbage in the trash. Lights are on inside. Lawn and trees are maintained. Exterior of personal in-yard, cars and driveway. Sounds of pets or animals inside or voices or the television. Um, neighbors advise that someone has moved in. Securing requirements. When completing a lock change, you're always going to want to make sure you're using the right key code. Um, so basically, you're going to look at your work order, look at the client number, and read specific instructions. With Altisource, you're going to always use a digital mechanical lock, not a knob lock and deadbolt, like with all other clients. If there's any postings or stickers, um, on the window, you're going to want to remove those or on the door and probably place a new one. For MSI and some multi source, we, they work with Wells Fargo. You must use the Wells Fargo postings when securing. They have the red line. They have to be in color if you're printing them. Um, for Cincinnati properties, use the four by six posting required by local ordinance for the content size. If you do not use this posting or use the incorrect one, there is a $250 fine. Okay, securing doors and lock changes. All exterior doors must be secured. Use identical key codes. So use the same key code in the front, on the side door, and the back door. They can't be three different key codes. Drawers should never be braced or nailed out. Outbuild building should be padlocked if no other locking mechanism is available. Sliding glass doors must be double locked. Unplug automatic garage door openers. So make sure when you're taking photos, you're taking before, during, and after. As you see, this is a before. This is during. He's changed the lock. This is a before. And this is an after with the key in the hole. This is going to be on all lock change orders. For slider locks, one goes at the top and one goes at the bottom. You've got your before picture and your after picture of those. When you're securing sheds or garage doors, um, sheds must be padlocked. You have a before, no lock, after with lock. Garage doors, 
you're going to want to do the same before interlock and after with, but also a before with it unplugged from the the ceiling and then um let's see securing windows windows have to be boarded per HUD specs that's using half inch plywood um two two by four brace boards with carriage bolts and nuts the entire window must be covered when completing this um when securing windows, you've got your before picture, your during picture, and your after picture. You're going to want to remove all glass when you get this order and you're there to secure. Securing pools and hot tubs and spas. You have to take detailed measurements of the pool size and also most um most covers are going to be spring covers which we have to order so we have as soon as you get these orders in you're going to want to go ahead order that pool cover because it may take a bit to get to you um let's see so this is a picture of you draining the water putting on this secure the um tarp to cover it or pull cover and then locking the gate or fence or door leading to the pool. You can also board the pool. Um, you cannot splice the wood so getting the material long enough to not splice is sometimes difficult. To secure in-ground pools, I've never been a fan of an in-ground pool, I mean above ground pool. Um, you're also, when you bid this, you're going to want to take dimensions. You're also going to want to bid to demo it and backfill the soil so there's not a hole in the property or anything else. Debris removal. This is going to outline the process of um, removing debris and what is required. You're always going to want to bid any type of large debris that you have to dis disassemble separately. Debris is um, measured by cubic yards. It's a three by three by three area. Um, you must take clear photos, mul um, multiple angles of every room or every pile of debris so that we can make sure that the bank sees the amount that you're bidding. When you're submitting photos, you're gonna have to take your before, during, and after photos, and also um, let us know how many cubic yards you removed. You're also gonna take a before and after picture of your trailer or truck empty and full with measuring tape, measuring the size. This is gonna show the client the size of your trailer and how much debris was removed. They go by trailer picks for the majority part, so, you can't tell us you're, you remove 20 cubic yards, but your trailer measurements only show 10. They're going to only build for 10. And this is taking a tape measure photo to show the size of your trailer. Personal property. Personal property is, is stored at a storage facility for 30 days. Um, we usually place a personal property notice. Personal property can be anything of any value or once had value to someone. Um, personal property is a very touchy subject. You're not going to take it to the dump. It gives the owner um, up to 30 days, to, or depending on the state, to come back and claim their stuff. You may see it as junk. They may see it as a jewel. So be very car careful not to throw away something that you wouldn't want thrown away if you were in that situation. Um, you're going to take before, during, and after photos of personal property, property of removing it it on the trailer and also at the storage. You're going to take a picture of the storage sign, the storage number, the lock on, unlocking it, and the lock um, back on once departing, showing that you secured the property. Broom swept condition. The property has to be in broom swept 
condition when you remove debris. So if you get a bit approval to remove 10 cubic yards of interior debris, you also have to broom sweep it, which means bring your broom. It's exactly what it says. Um, and then it's got to be free of dust and dirt, free of hazardous material, um, free of interior and exterior debris, free of personal and belongings. A janitorial service is not part of the broom swept condition, nor is it re reimbursable from HUD. It comes with the debris removal. In your broom swept photos, you're going to take before and after pics of each room from the same angles. Then we have seasonal maintenance. Um, grass cuts, this kind of gives you a guideline of when they start and when they end. Um, for Ohio, we're looking at October, I mean, April 1st, they start and October 31st, they end. Michigan is the same. Um, minimum required to, requirements are mowing, weed eating, edging, sweeping all paved areas, removing clippings from the cuttings. It's very important. Our client will send you back if you do not do that. Um, leaf removal, indications of free debris, like a bottle or the wind through the neighbors, like blew some paper from the neighbor into the yard. We're gonna, that's included and we must pick up. The grass hut must be a max of two inches. So um, you're always gonna wanna make sure your mower blades are down and cut it short. Weed should be trimmed. Um, shrubs and trees need to be trimmed trimmed all the way off of the house or structure. Um, or if it's over the allowable, you're gonna wanna bid the shrubs and trees. A perimeter cut is only cutting the grass around the perimeter of the house, like a instead of cutting the entire lot. So you're only doing 100 by 150 area around the house. Um, you've got your before, during, and after pictures. You're gonna wanna take these from the same angle. You're also, Going to want to take a tape measure or yardstick to measure the grass height before and after your cut. Then you can bid to remove vines, saplings, trees, shrubs um, that are touching the property. You're going to want to clear um, to make sure they're clearly not touching it if they are bid it or complete if you can do it for the allowable. And this isn't just the main house structure. This is going to be any shops, sheds, fences, anything on the property that those weeds, shrubs, trims, trees can cause damage to the property if they're not maintained. Snow removal. The property must be accessible in the winter months. Remove snow when there is an accumulation of two to three inches or more, depending on the client. Check the work order for instructions. Snow should be removed from walkways, driveways, porches, entryways, all and all areas should be salted. Photos must be taken from the same angles, before, during, and after photos, showing that you have cleared the snow, salted it. Um, this goes over winterization requirements. Winterizations happen between October 1st and March 31st. Some clients are year-round winterization clients. The water valves must be zip-tied shut, any broken or damaged shutoff valves, you should um, bid to repair. Don't shut off the water from the curb for multi-unit properties with shared water lines. Turn off the fixtures if they're shared. No winterization process must include the winterization process must include the toilet cleaning. So if the toilet is dirty, it does include cleaning it. A complete draining of all plumbing, heating systems, pressurizing the lines for to detect any breaks. Um, toilet bowl should be wrapped um, with holes punched too for ventilation. If there's an existing sump pump, check to see if it's working or not. If it needs to be repaired or replaced, provide a bid. If it's working and the power is off, submit that the power company needs to have the power restored. Attach the client winterization sign to all traps fix and fixtures. Breakers should be left off unless needed for the sump pump or dehumidifier. Property should only be winterized once. However, if a property should be winterized, if 
the initial winterization is no longer effective or intact. Um, for a dry heat winterization, these are the photos required. You're going to want to take a picture of you pressurizing the lines. They must hold to 30 psi for um, 30 to 40 minutes. Label your photos, you know, pouring the antifreeze in after with the tape. You're going to want to, this is for a wet heat system. Your before, during, and after photos as well. For roofs. Any roof damage damages must be patched or repaired. This includes damages to shingles, roof vents, skylights, dormer windows, gutters, and chimneys. Properties cannot convey with a tarp. Damages must be repaired before the property can convey to HUD. Um, with documenting the roof damages, you must also take photos from inside the house as well. So you're going to want to be able to Bring your ladder, get up on the roof if you notice damages, you provide a bid to tarp and to repair. Um, then also inside the house, in the attic or on the ceiling, so you can show the damages are affecting the interior of the home. You're going to want to label your photos of the location and before, during, and after. And here's some more examples of it. Graffiti. Properties cannot have graffiti and convey. Um, interior graffiti does not need to be covered unless it contains profanity, crude language, or inappropriate images. So if you go into a house and there's just someone's name on there, we do not have to bid it. But if it does contain profanity um, or inappropriate images, then we do need to place a bid to paint over it or kilt it or remove it. Damages to the plumbing system um, and electrical systems should be bid for approval to repair and replace. Let's see, like if there's exposed wires, open pipes, and the utility is on the wires or pipes must be capped. Um, this is for Wells Fargo. In Altisource, these are some of the pre-approved line items that you can do immediately. If there's mold, mold must always be reported in the source that caused it. The source of the mold must be fixed. Dehumidifier placed in the home, um, if it has a high humidity. Properties can convey with mold only if it was not caused by the mortgage or neglect, it has not grown since the beginning of the report, and the source has been fixed. If the source of the mold is determined to be mortgage or neglect, then the mold and all the associated damages must be remediated prior to conveying. You're always going to want to report any mold or discoloration by taking photos, giving us the measurements of the affected areas and what is causing the mold. Um, here's some examples of pictures. A failure to report mold in any location of the structure and not bidding to remediate it will cause it to be a mortgage or neglect and a chargeback, and we'll have to go back and fix it at our own cost or be charged for the contractor who has to go out there. Um, example, the cause of, um, when reporting, always indicate the following, the cause, um, source of mold, for instance, mold is due to the leaking roof through the hole in the roof from a tree. Um, location, it's in the attic and ceiling, in the living room and master bedroom. Dimensions. 20 by 10, 50 by 30, et cetera. If the property is a mobile home, um, you're going to want to let us know this. Um, make sure there's no damage to the skirting to small animals. Can't get in. Um, it needs to be fixed to be conveyed. What are the big six damages? Um, at the time of commands, the property must be undamaged by the big six. You must always pro provide bids to repair the damage caused by the big six. That's going to be fire, flood, earthquake, earthquake, hurricane, tornado, boiler, explosion. Mortgage or neglect is not officially a big six, but damages must be fixed prior to commands also. Here are some examples of 
the big six damages. Posted notices at the property. When a posting is present at the property, you're always going to want to take a clear and legible photo. Quality must be able to read the printed postings. Um, best practices is always to review their photos before you leave to make sure they are legible. Violations. If there's a violation posted or the property has a condemn notice, call from the site for approval to cure it. Take clear photos of the posting showing what is the violation for, the date, and the contact information. Your photo should be clear enough to be read. Um, some clients will allow a bit after the fact, other clients won't, so we need to call our client and let them know and let them advise us. If you found an animal at the property, um, live animals, you need to call animal control. They may not be left at the property. Dead animals should be removed as soon as possible as they can constitute a hazard. So you're going to want to call from site so we can call our client and see if we can get the approval to remove immediately or bid. If there's pest infestation or you have a removal, you're always going to want to take before, during, and after photos. Um, this could be any type of extermination from flying insects to wasps to rodents. Um, just so you know, it's illegal to kill bats and in many areas, honeybees. In these cases, you will need to have a removal service come and remove the bats or beehive. Emergency conditions. Emergency conditions such as flooded basement should be remediated for the allowable if possible. If over the allowable, call from site for approval. Always check the work order instructions as some clients allow bit after the fact work. If the work order if the work is over the allowable, but client allows bit after the fact, you can proceed with it. Examples of some emergency conditions include, but not limited to, roof repairs, flooded basement, um, crawl spaces, overgrown landscaping, accessible windows and doors, um, interop or pool securing, interoperable sump pumps, violations, frozen plumbing fixtures. And here's some examples of photos of emergency conditions you may find at a property. When you find a detached structure, they must be repaired to the same quality as the main dwelling. No active leaks, broken windows, trip hazards, debris, etc. And locked with either a knob lock and a deadbolt padlock, depending on the type of door. You're always going to want to take photos before, during, and after. When you complete this. If the outbuilding is in poor condition, submit a bid to demo it. Demolition will be the discreet of the client, but bids to demo should always be provided if the structure is in poor condition and may present a safety hazard because of the risk of collapsing. Utilities. Confirm the status of the utilities and take photos of them when you go to the property. Provide the name and phone number of the utility company. If the utilities are not active and the sump pump is present, use a generator to determine if the sump pump is operable. Um, utilities are required to be on when a dehumidifier or sump pump is present or when required by a local ordinance. It's critical that you, are, you accurately report the status of the utilities. Failure to do so could lead to damages, including but not limited to mold growth flooding, which can be held which you can be held liable for. Utilities include gas, water, electric, and oil. Appliances. You're going to provide bids to replace household appliances such as refrigerator, st refrigerator stove, etc. These appliances are only needed for conveyance depending on the original appraisal, so the client will need bids to approve if necessary. Appliances associate, so associated with the HVA system HVAC system must be present for conveyance. Provide a bid to replace majority appliances such as AC unit and furnace. If the water heater has damaged or missing prior to the preservation work being done at the property, it may need to be replaced, but provide a bid so that the client can decide. If missing, cap the open line. If the water heater does not need to be replaced, 
does not need to re be replaced if it was damaged, vandalized, or stolen after the client begins work at the property. And we have evictions. When it comes to evictions, you must call and confirm the receipt um, of the eviction and that the crew will attend the eviction. You also have to call the sheriff and attorney um, its name to um, make sure, confirm it with them also to see how many men are needed. If a movie, moving company is required for the eviction, you must remain at the property for the duration of the eviction. The number of men and the duration of the eviction must be documented. You must also provide photos of the sheriff's vehicle or car. Make sure you fill out the eviction form um, when you complete an eviction. Local and state codes. Local and state regulations always sur supersede everything else. For example, the state of California requires water heaters to be strapped to the wall to protect against earthquake damage. If this is not completed, the property will not convey. Another example is Arizona where some areas require pools to be drained to a specific level and treated to pre prevent mosquito infestation. You must provide documentation if completing work differently due to a local, um, local or state code. Condition report. Condition reports, the purpose of it is to provide written documentation for the subject of the property. Condition report would generally, generally contain four sections securing mobile home information, debris removal, and rooms. Um, it, it's basically you need to tell us what type of locks were installed and where. Damages, if there's a pool, general securing observations, if it's a mobile home. Mobile home specifications, unique identification numbers, type of foundation, a fix or wheels and axle, if it has skirting, debris removal, if there's debris or personals, property hazards or debris, violations, yard maintenance, interior, exterior conditions, presence of mold, rooms, describe the condition of each room, walls, floors, ceilings, and windows. Um, condition reports for if securing, indicate that which sections of the property you're securing for all items that you've marked yes or you're telling us about, make sure to leave a small comment. Um, the mobile home information, you're going to want to make sure you get the year, the make, the model, the length, the width of the mobile home, the size, the VIN number, the HUD tag number, the serial number, let us know if the tongue. Um, the mobile home has a tongue, wheels, axles are attached, um, or if it's on a foundation, if it has skirting. The condition report with debris, if hazards and debris are removed, provide the description of what was removed. Um, submit comments outlining emergency conditions. Um, submit bids to place the property in ICC condition. If the property is occupied upon arrival, then explain how it was determined occupied, um, direct contact with the tenant, visual, um, and the, you're always going to want to put the date repaired. On the appliances and rooms, you're going to want to let us know if there's a furnace, air conditioner, water heater, range, refrigerator, um, let us know if anything's missing or damaged. For points of service for Wells Fargo 01, WF01, as it, um, you're going to have to check in with your ASMIN number. And then there's a list here that's going to ask you a bunch of questions in PBW. A HUD checklist this is an example of MSIs. Each of our clients have their own checklist, but it's going to be a a lot of questions about the property that you're going to have to answer to let us and let so that to tell us so that we can let our clients know the condition of the property. Bids. Provide an explanation with your bids. If you cannot complete any part of a work order per instructions, always provide an explanation why. There's a 
This will decrease the chances of the work order being rejected and sent back to us in late fees. Um, also, when you're providing a bid, provide the material. Um, make sure to provide the material that's needed. If it's a special order, we need to know. Um, work the scope of work for the subcontractor and or if the property is too far. Um, remove and replace bids. When bidding to remove items such as flooring, walls, paneling, sheetrock, cabinets, etc., always submit a bid to replace the item as well. If mold is present and a bid to submit to remove drywall, then always bid to repair and replace it. Bid requirements. Um, for bids that require multiple line items, always provide the itemized list of repairs include materials and use dimensions. For example, a roof can be manufactured a multi-phase faucet repair. Interior, each layer of the repair is submitted and a separate line item. So you're going to do things by steps. You're not going to do it as a cluster one, you know, repair roof at 10 by 40. You're going to put one line item is going to be repair that asphalt shingles, remove the rotten sheathing, replace asphalt shingles, and replace the sheathing. So you're going to remove and replace line by line item, step by step. Um, we do bid cubic yard or debris in cubic yards. It's a three by three. Um, the number of cubic yards cannot be increased to offset the weight of the debris. If the disposal site charges more, please provide a receipt. Um, there's some conversion apps that may help you out with converting debris into cubic yards. For example, um, five full garbage bags of 45 gallons each are equal to one cubic yard. If you enter your total gallons, five by 45, it's 225 gallons. And the app will convert this for you. So there's an app called Globe Convert Fee that you can download and have on you at all times when you're trying to bid. Dimensions, always provide dimensions when app applicable. I'm um, sorry. Um, ensure that the unit measurement is consistent with the, each bid item. So for instance, for vines, baseboard scatters, you're gonna measure in linear feet. Roof, flooring, insulation, pools, house demo, square feet, tree trim, um, diameter and height, Snow removal grass, height and square foot. Windows boarding, replacing and reglazing is going to be in United Inch. Fence, fence blind shrubs, shrubs around the house is going to be linear feet and height. Tree removal is going to be in diameter. Bid details. If you need to replace bids for additional conveyance work, always submit one bid for all items. The ideal conveyance visit consists of doing all work that you can. For the allowable, placing one bid for the remaining items and returning to complete work when it's approved. Um, let's see. You're going to in PPW select the drop down box that matches the bid. Select if if the selection isn't available, put other. So if you don't see what you need, go to other and type it in. The description is the one of the most important aspects of a bid. When you're providing a bid, make sure you're putting the location, dimensions, and materials, source. If mold or damages are present and any other factual details that pertains to the bid. The quality, the quantity is the number of units per rate. Photos must support the bid quantity. The rate is the amount of money um, per the quantities in order to prevent excessive bids. We, as well as our clients, use cost estimators such as repair base and exact PRM. Um, the omission of bids could result, result in neglect and could be a return at your own cost work order. So make sure you're providing bids for any damages or anything need, repairs need, needing to be completed at the property. These are some examples of good bids. And um, the drop down section of this for this type consists um, with the bid, the description indicates the location, 
the type of repair that I mentioned and the amount of money reflects the fair price service. So the tar patched in by 10 foot around chimney. These are some bad. Um, trim two trees. The description is too vague. It, the, it should have the height and the diameter if it's touching the house and actually the location of the tree. There's a lot of trees at each property. So giving the location is going to help out when you get that bid approval to know which tree they're approving. Cost estimator requirements. Um, this doesn't really apply to you guys. Photographs. Photo quality and date stamps. Check your camera settings before work. We all use our mobile phones from the PPW app. Um, make sure that you're stopping your feet when you're taking photos. That'll make sure that the photo isn't blurry. If you keep walking and taking your photo, your photo is going to be blurry and you're going to, we can't submit it to our client. Make sure that all the photos are, you're, you're taking them with your camera the right way. So don't take photos sideways, upside down, angled. Um, take clear, visible photos to show what you see at the property. You are the eyes for us and for our client while visiting the property. So we need to see everything you see. You're going to tell a story basically with your photos. Um, in your photos, never include ever. Minors or people appear to be under the age of 18. Crew members smoking or without a shirt. Obscene gestures or behaviors. Views from the interior of the vehicle. So if you take a photo, you need to be on the exterior vehicle. No one under the age of 18 is allowed to go on premises of any property. You can never smoke on any property. And you have to be dressed with shirts that are, are tactful. This is a company. Um, no obscene gestures. You never know when an inspector, realtor, or someone from the bank is going to be at the property or walk up. Um, this is some examples of don't take your picture sideways, upside down, right side up is the way to do it. Um, warped photos. It shows like a stretched version. No panoramic views. We need the actual normal photo of the property. Um, corrupted photos. These are ones that something's wrong with your camera or you and we can't see the entire clear picture. Um, black and white photos are not okay. It's too blurry or it's too dark. Um, duplicates. Our system will um, indicate duplicates for us. So if you try to submit duplicates, we will automatically know. Um, photo labels. You're always going to want to try to label your photos in just before, during, and after at least or what you're bidding for each photo. Every time you go to a property, you're going to always, no matter what, get the photo, the address number and the street sign and exterior of the house. You're going to get all four sides. So you have the front, a clear front, back, side, right side, left side. Um, you're also going to want to show six angles of the front yard. So you're going to go to the right of the property, the middle of the property, and the left of the property in the front. Also do the same in the back. Backyard and debris, um, various angles of the entire backyard, fence line, grass cut, trees, shrubs, if debris is present, and how many cubic yards. <clears throat> when you go into a kitchen, you're going to want to open all cabinets and drawers and take photos of them in, inside of them. Open up the refrigerator, the closets, um, the attics, and take wide angle, full room shots so that we can see the floor and the ceiling in the same picture with all the debris. So you're going to walk into a bedroom, you're going to stand in one corner, take one wide angle shot, go to another corner and take another. This way we're seeing exactly what you see with your eyes. When it comes to damages, you're going to take photos and you're going to label them and show in to match your bids. So we know exactly what you're talking about, what you're seeing when you're bidding something. You also are always going to report any damages at a property every time you go to the property. Um, if there's any escalated events, um, call us immediately in office and 
make sure you have the property address details and what we need to do to remediate. Never call 911 emergency media threatening actions or behaviors or claims or litigations. Um, call us here at the office. We may have you call and do a police report um, or tell you how to handle it. Um, make sure that wrapping this up, you always travel with all your tools, all your cameras. Um, you complete the work order as it's instructed in the in the work order, uh, how it's outlined. Um, if verbal approval was given, indicate the name and the person that provided the approval on your condition report or in a job note. Review instructions to ensure that you use the correct key code and lockbox code to use. Ensure that you have all photos captured of all rooms and all angles of the house. Um, remember to submit photos that are frequently omitted, such as rafters, mold, attics, closets, debris. Complete all commands work that you can do for the allowable. Any remaining should be submitted bid once, and it must be bid the first time. Take pictures of all damages, use the correct securing postings, and take legible photo photos of it. And that is it. Thank you guys for your time.